Hello everyone, Arlisha here and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be repainting a scene from one of my favorite movies of all time, Spirited Away. While I work on the sketch for this painting, I want to set the scene a little bit and paint a picture for you. Not a literal picture, but a mental picture of my first experience with this film. It was maybe 2002, I think I was like 11 years old, and my twin brother and I were having one of our first experiences of getting to go and watch a movie by ourselves. We went to a local theater that I know had a name, but everybody in town just called it the Dollar Theater because you could go and see movies for a dollar, which sounds absolutely crazy now. The movies were usually from like the previous year, so they weren't brand new movies, and you could go and watch a movie for a dollar. So my brother and I went into the theater with a dollar each, and this was a time when like most families didn't even have like a home computer in their home, like let alone smartphones or anything like that. So the internet presence wasn't, you know, that much of a thing in the average household. So I knew nothing about Hayao Miyazaki or Studio Ghibli films or anything like that. We just knew that there was an animated movie at the theater and we knew absolutely nothing about it. And my brother and I were just completely captivated by the movie. It was just an incredible, amazing, like one of those core memory experiences. When we ran out of the theater and our mom came to pick us up, we immediately asked for two more dollars so we could go and watch it again. And we did. <laughs> we watched it twice in a row and talked about it nonstop. We were absolutely in love with the movie and eventually we got the VHS tape so we could watch it at home whenever we wanted, and we did. We watched it all the time. So Spirited Away was my first Studio Ghibli film, and it was actually a few years before I even learned that the others existed. Again, not a very internet-forward time, and Hayao Miyazaki wasn't exactly a household name in my family. So much of the things that I love now, even as an adult, stemmed from my love of this film, and it was so difficult for me to choose one moment to paint. At first, I thought for sure it would be like crazy no face, but ultimately I just could not pass up the opportunity to paint Dragon Haku. And if you haven't seen the last video I did where I painted a scene from a movie, I did Pride and Prejudice. And that one was actually a lot easier for me for a couple of reasons. Pride and Prejudice is a live action film, so I'm working from reference images of real people, and this is of course an animated film. And you may think that drawing a creature would be the more challenging part of this painting for me, because I normally draw people. That's something that I do all the time. But I found that drawing Chihiro was way, way, way easier than painting her. And the process of painting Haku, even though I've only done it like once before in the form of a small watercolor sketch, I found the process to be pretty straightforward, very enjoyable, and just very relaxing to paint him. And it really wasn't something that I thought too much about. I just added the colors I wanted to add, took the steps I wanted to take, and then he was done. I thought it would be interesting to try doing a blue wash over every part of the painting except for Chihiro. I just wanted to see how that would affect the colors and to see if it would set Haku into the background a little bit more. Just something I wanted to experiment with.
time to finally paint Chihiro, which ultimately felt like, okay, I can't avoid this any longer. It was quite the struggle for me. I knew that in drawing her, it was going to be in my like more stylized drawing style and she wasn't going to look super realistic, but I've always struggled with finding a balance between my more stylized drawings and actually painting. So while the process originally started out pretty straightforward, in the film we have a pretty straightforward like cell shading style and I originally started with something like that but I knew that I wanted the rendering on Chihiro to be a bit more painterly and that was a balance that I spent a lot of time like working and reworking trying to hone in on. One struggle that I wasn't necessarily anticipating was just the fact that her face is so small. This sketchbook is somewhere around like 5.5 by 8.5 inches so her head is very small and I usually do very large portraits which allows me to do big loose brush strokes and then render in from there but with the entire area of her head being so small I constantly found myself like messing up edges and painting over areas and then repainting over them and I didn't have a clear end goal in sight so I found myself just reworking the same areas over and over, which was something that just didn't happen when I was working on Haku. For whatever reason, that section of the painting came together really smoothly. There was something really enjoyable about just kind of smushing paint around on her face, as I knew that I was like kind of reactivating areas underneath, and it created an interesting sort of blended effect that while it is a bit messy, I do like it. Of course, as an adult now, I've seen several Studio Ghibli films and have started to share them with my children, which is always an emotional experience and I just cry every time. They love My Neighbor Totoro so much and is definitely, at their age, their favorite one to watch. So it's been really special as an adult to get to rewatch those films myself and of course like notice more things about them that I didn't when I was younger and then to get to see them what feels like for the first time through the eyes of my children it just feels really really special. I would love to hear from all of you about your thoughts on you know your favorite movie or even this movie your experiences with this film. It's always going to have a very very special place in my heart and every time I go back to watch it there are just more and more things that I notice or that I enjoy and especially now as an artist I can appreciate things like the backgrounds and the character designs so much more. I also think it's funny that even though this was in my sketchbook and in a small sketchbook I would say like my favorite size to paint at is like four times the size of the sketchbook but working on this sketchbook page took twice as long as my normal paintings just because there were so many like little fine details to hone in on and so many areas that I reworked multiple times.
Ultimately, I think that there is something kind of mottled and messy about the way I left Chihiro looking, but I really like it actually. I like the atmosphere that it gives the painting and the emotion that it conveys. It was very tricky working at such a small size and trying to figure out how I wanted to stylize everything, but we got somewhere in the end that I'm really happy with. Let me know what you think of this painting, maybe what your favorite Miyazaki film is, or what you would like to see me paint next. I have so many ideas for like movie scenes I want to repaint in the future, and I'm really happy that I got to add this one to the series. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons and my YouTube members for supporting me and my art and this channel. I'm so grateful to all of you. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I will talk to you all next week. Bye bye.